Five days this week. Five days this week and five phase stories as well. I might as well change the title of our channel to, to phase news and I do apologize for that. This topic though is one only really being talked about by Esports Insider. That's Adam Fitch, a great Call of Duty writer who brings a great point to light that we've talked on maybe a touch in the past, but most other sources are not really talking about this. The way that FaZe Clan possibly tricked the Call of Duty franchise system in a very peculiar way. Now I'm not calling out FaZe for doing so. I've said in the past and I'll say it again. A lot of things they do do are are very smart some things aren't so smart this one though their partnership with venture that's going to be atlanta ventures as well over there in atlanta georgia it was pretty genius from the start very early on we did know about this uh, atlanta ventures are obviously partnered now with the atlanta phase for call of duty the atlanta reign for overwatch and they've somehow broken that that strict rule besides league of legends when it comes to city-based organizations city-based franchise leagues like overwatch and like call of duty it was kind of a widely known or kind of widely thought thing at least that organizations out there have to have exclusive brands or exclusive team names to those city-based teams. And we've seen it time and time again. You look at the London Spitfire owned by Cloud9. They're not the London Clouds. You look at the San Francisco Shock owned by NRG. They're not the, the energized Shocks. Um, so on and so forth. The list goes on, guys, of Overwatch teams. LA Valiant owned by MIBR or Immortals Gaming Club. They're not the LA Immortals. They're the LA Valiant for Overwatch. When you actually take on a city-based franchise league team, it's been known for all teams out there besides just one now being FaZe Clan that you have exclusive names when it comes to that city and when it comes to the Atlanta FaZe we just we've never seen this before so it's very hard to know how to react and how they actually got past the rule that people thought was a rule but maybe it wasn't and even when it comes to Call of Duty there's only been one exception to this just to kind of clarify as well the LA Optic the way they can actually use the Optic name is because they solely bought that brand name for the franchise league it's only gonna be exclusively used for this league so that's why it is allowed because the Optic name will no longer be in other esports um, so that's why it does make sense it still fits that rule book of having an exclusive brand name to the city based franchise so that's why Optic can be used obviously we go to teams like Envy they own the Dallas M Empire. You know, obviously they're not going to be called Envy anymore in Call of Duty. We look even further into NRG Chicago. They're the Huntsmen. They're not the NRG team for Call of Duty. So it's been very simple to point out to all of you guys. Every city-based team out there is an exclusive team name separate from the organization. When it comes to FaZe Clan, though, and their partnership with the Atlanta Venture Group, they apparently have somehow surpassed that rule. And it's only really being talked about by guys like Adam Fitch, which is still very surprising. And again, it's a very genius move by FaZe Clan. They pay what we assume to be a part of that $25 million fee, not the entire fee, and they get their name on the team, on the actual brand itself, and to that in itself, I've already made a video about this, it's genius, but you have to wonder, why did other organizations not follow this same suit if they knew it was actually allowed? Now, brought to us by two Adam Fitch interviews, I will link them down below for all of you guys. I'm not going to touch on all the information in them. They're great reads, though. Please do check them out. The first of which is actually the CEO and the founder of Atlanta Ventures right they've now partnered with FaZe Clan for this Atlanta franchise spot which they now have two of and when asked about this how they actually got the FaZe brand name to be partnered with them and actually take over the team name he kind of somewhat dodges the question obviously maybe he can't answer that I'm not going to blame him for that but he actually puts it back on Adam the interviewer and says how about you ask the league about that we're very excited to partner with FaZe Clan but go and ask the league aka ask Activision about that who by the way has obviously not responded about this Activision Vision Blizzard under enough fire as it is when it comes time for making some changes, which they did make updates this morning for Call of Duty, so we're making progress, but the Blizzard side of things certainly still under fire. Even further though, and I think even more interesting, is actually again Adam Fitch talking to the founder of Heretics, one of the many, many Call of Duty organizations who did not make the league, and by the way, when he asked that founder about what he thought of the Atlanta FaZe, how that came to be, and how, the, how he actually found that brand name, the fact that FaZe got their name inside the team name what, is, what was his response? It was pretty staggering. He actually said himself personally, he didn't know it was an option. So personally, he was very surprised by this. And he also thought that many organizations probably did not know about this because if they did, they probably would have been doing the same thing. So it adds a further question out there as to why Activision, if they have not responded about FaZe getting their name on it, why have not other organizations somewhat complained about this? Because when it comes time for branding, I myself do personally think you'd want to have your name.
name like FaZe in your team name for every esport possible. No matter if it's a franchise league or a regular esport out there, I think it'd be great to have a uniform name and always be Envy, Envy, Envy instead of being Envy this or the Dallas this. I think it'd be better and so that's why obviously FaZe took advantage of that, but it's, it's very weird that only FaZe has done it. And again, I'm not blaming FaZe Clan. The fact they actually pursued this and they thought uh, they could do it and they, they actually have done it and now are the only team doing it, uh, it speaks a lot to whatever whatever rules they knew about or whatever rules they surpassed that other teams couldn't. I'm just very surprised to not see other owners now respond about that because if I was an owner, I feel like I'd be a bit upset if I just spent 25 plus million dollars and just hired 7 to 10 players plus a staff, owing each of those players 50k minimum every single year, also paying for food, travel, housing, retirement, 401k whatever it is and all of a sudden the phase team comes out and they get their actual name on the team name I might be a bit upset about that. So Activision, if you'd like to respond, feel free to. I'll be covering more of Adam Fitch's material here because he does great stuff. If you guys want to check his articles out, they are great reads as well. He seems to be the only person out there really looking into this controversy, which again, I'm not blaming FaZe Clan for. Again, it's a super smart move. It makes perfect sense, but it has to leave you wondering, why did no one else do it? Until next time, I hope you guys all enjoy. If there's a Call of Duty, esports, or other story out there you want me to cover, feel free to drop a comment or a DM guys i will cover your story as soon as possible until then enjoy the rest of your weekends we slowly approach the start of the first inaugural cdl season and well it looks very fun the drama does continue i'll be covering all of it right here until next time take care of yourselves i'll see y'all back here sometime soon